Polymerase chain reaction or PCR, is an in vitro technique, for generating large quantities of a specific DNA sequence. In simple words, it is an automated version of DNA replication. A typical PCR reaction, produces millions of copies of the target DNA segment, from the original DNA molecule. This technique was invented by, Carey B. Mulis in 1985. He received Nobel Prize in Chemistry for the invention of PCR, in the year 1993. Polymerase chain reaction, the name itself tells us that, in this technique, DNA polymerase is used to produce copies of a target DNA sequence. It is a chain reaction because, the target DNA is repeatedly replicated as long as, the procedure of this technique continues. We will understand this further in detail shortly. Let's first understand the basic idea behind the PCR technique. As we know, DNA double helix can be dissociated or melted by heating. This is known as denaturation. Once separated, we can copy each of the two separated strands by using primers, the oxynucleotides and DNA polymerase. Primer is allowed to bind to the separated strands. This is known as annealing. DNA polymerase carries out the process of DNA synthesis. This is known as extension. As a result of this, we will get duplicated DNA sequences. This process can be repeated many times and as a result, we get many copies of the original DNA sequence. Some additional points about polymerase chain reaction that we should know are PCR is a cyclic process. It consists of a series of 30 to 35 cycles. Each cycle has three steps, denaturation, annealing, and extension. And each cycle lasts from 3 to 5 minutes. This means, we can have millions of copies of target DNA sequence in approximately 2.5 hours. Polymerase chain reaction takes place in small tubes, made up of polypropylene. These tubes are known as PCR tubes. To automate this reaction, these PCR tubes are kept in an instrument known as thermal cycler or thermocycler. It is also simply called as PCR machine. Thermal cycler is an automatic temperature control device. It automates cycling and incubation times for the reaction. Let's understand in detail how PCR result in the production of large quantities of target DNA sequence in a given DNA segment. As we said, PCR is an in vitro DNA replication reaction. So, there are four basic components required for this reaction to take place. The first component is double-stranded DNA segment. It is the source of the target DNA sequence that is to be copied. In PCR, both the strands of the DNA sequence act as template strands for DNA replication. One important point here is that we should have prior knowledge of the sequences at the border of the target gene segment. This is essential for our second requirement that is, two different single-stranded DNA primers. These are short, approximately 12 to 24 nucleotides long, chemically synthesized DNA sequences. One of these primers is complementary to the border sequence of one strand. And second primer is complementary to the border sequence end of the other strand. They will bind to these DNA strands such that, their three prime end will point towards each other. Our third requirement is, a supply of 4-deoxynucleotide triphosphates. These deoxynucleotides will be used by DNA polymerases, to synthesize new strands during the replication process. Finally, the fourth requirement is the enzyme to catalyze the DNA replication reaction. A heat-stable DNA polymerase. Now question is, why heat-stable?
This is because PCR is carried out at higher temperatures, where normal DNA polymerase enzymes will lose their structure and therefore, stability and their function. The most often used DNA polymerase in PCR is called, TAC polymerase. TAC polymerase is named after the thermophilic bacterial species, Thermus aquaticus. This bacterium lives in hot springs at near boiling conditions. Nowadays, there are other more efficient polymerases for PCR. All these reaction components are added in the PCR tube, along with suitable buffer. And then, these tubes are kept in thermocycler. Let's now understand the steps involved in polymerase chain reaction. The first step is known as, denaturation. In this step, the reaction mixture is heated. The temperature during this step is about 94 to 98 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, the double-stranded DNA in the mixture, denatures into single strands. The second step is known as primer annealing. Sometimes, also called as hybridization. In this step, the temperature is slowly reduced. Temperature is about 40 to 60 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, hybridization of primers to their complementary sequences on the DNA template strands takes place. Recall that, in PCR both the separated DNA strands act as the template and, we have two different DNA primers. So, this is our first DNA template strand. The primer binds complementary to the nucleotides at the border of the target sequence on this strand. Similarly, other primer binds on the second DNA template strand. Note that, three prime ends of both the primers are pointing towards each other. Third step is known as primer extension or simply, extension. In this step, the temperature is raised to about 70 to 75 degrees Celsius. More specifically, 72 degrees Celsius temperature is used. This temperature is optimum for the catalytic functioning of TAC DNA polymerase. So, in the third step, TAC polymerase start extending the primer by copying the complementary target DNA sequence. Remember that. DNA synthesis is initiated at the three prime end of each primer and uses the separated DNA strands as a template. Here, note that, after the completion of the first cycle, the number of copies of the target sequence is doubled. In our illustration, we started with a single DNA sequence. And now, at the end of the first cycle, we have two copies of the DNA sequence. Here, we have something more important to notice. Each of these two end products are made up of one original DNA strand and, one newly synthesized, long strand. We are saying long strand because, the newly synthesized strand extends beyond the required target sequence. The end point of these long strands is determined by, wherever DNA synthesis get terminated by chance. So, we are representing the three prime end of the long strands by the arrow symbol. Now, let's move on to the second cycle. Remember that, for second cycle we have now, two DNA double strands. That means, after the denaturation step in the second cycle, we will have, four DNA template strands. Two of these are the original DNA strands and, two are the long strands. Let's say, this is one of the two double-stranded DNA in the second cycle. It undergoes denaturation, annealing, and extension. Again, DNA sequence got doubled. But, this time, we also get a short strand. So, why short? Because the new strand is only extended to the required endpoint defined by border sequence of the template strand. So, in the second cycle of PCR we started with two DNA copies. And, at the end of this cycle we get four DNA copies. 
This cyclic process of DNA replication goes on doubling the DNA copies with each subsequent cycle. And, with each subsequent cycle, short template strands become more abundant. Because of this, the target DNA sequence is successfully amplified. PCR has limitless applications. Some important application areas of PCR include Evolutionary studies Forensic analysis such as, for paternity testing Crime investigation Genome sequencing projects Disease diagnosis Agricultural testing etc. I hope this lecture is helpful to you. Thank you for watching.